I would first like to start to say welcome to Gothenburg. Uh, we are very happy you're here and we are very happy to be the stop for uh, Volvo Ocean Race. For us, it's a, a question about uh, sailing, it's a question about courage, uh, long-term commitment to do something, and uh, that's what engaged, I think, the Gothenburg people when it comes to Volvo Ocean Race, and that it includes the sea and the water. Because is it one main message, as we have from the Gothenburg uh, citizen, is we would like to be close to the water. So we have tried to carry that uh, theme through our constructions and our building of the city. We are also proud to say that we are the uh, uh, Earth Hour uh, City of the Year in, uh, in, in Sweden. We got the title uh, this year and we are proudly to, to have that uh, title because that means a lot to us as this city actually uh, previous have been mentioned as some kind of waiting room to, to hell, actually, from a former environmental minister of Sweden. So we're very proud that we have, have had this journey to just be uh, looked upon as an industrial dirty city, to be a sustainable city, including modern industry. And so for us, this title mean, mean, mean a lot. But that also means a lot for, uh, for doing more. And um, that's why we try now to actually to marry together the, the uh, Volvo Ocean Race uh, stop and uh, parts of the city. Because where the Volvo Ocean Race um, area is, is where we are going to build the new Gothenburg. And I think that's advantage and a privilege for a city to be able to build in the main city a new city. Most cities are already built and are quite dense, uh, but if we look on Gothenburg, we still have areas inside the city, in the main city, which we can do something completely different with. And we know that each, each period in time have their visions for building and how a city should look like. And I think today we have the vision that we should be sustainable in all the three perspectives, uh, both socially, economically, and of course, environmentally. And um, when the Volvo Ocean Race are leaving the city, uh, we are starting to build the new city of Gothenburg. And we are not going to do this alone. And we can't do it alone. And therefore, we're trying to collaborate as much as possible. Uh, we do it with the, for example, with the test with the new electrical buses now, uh, the bus 55, which you maybe have seen on the street, the light green bus, which is a test. Can we do it in a different way? Can we do it in a smarter way? And we know that a completely quiet bus gives us the possibility to build in a different way than we do today. Because the restrictions today in Sweden is that noise makes an, a, a problem when we want to make the city more dense than, than it is today. Uh, when we're working in the city, we have tried to do um, environmental work in construction together uh, with the partners who actually are asking for, for land to build on in the city of Gothenburg. And we have had in that dialogue between the city and the construction and property sector some agreements uh, and reach a consensus on some parts of the building uh, process. And that's tried to coordinate the partners involved in the construction process, pre prevention of uh, production waste and phasing out of environmental and hazardous building materials, renovation of older mass-produced housing estate that reached the end of its technical lifetime, and a flexible design of buildings with the possibility of development, alteration and removal and reconstructions. I think the last bit is quite important because it's, it's also always easy if you have the possibility to build something new, to, to just focus on what's, what's going to be new, because then you can do it completely from the beginning and do it the right way. But most of the city are already built, and we have to live with that. And some of the buildings which we built in the 
50s and the 60s are not all that good, especially not when it comes to energy efficiency. And we have to focus on that part of the city as well to see how we can make that more energy efficiency and make it more modern than it is today. I think we have a few good examples in the city of Gothenburg. Uh, here, uh, on the other side of the river, I have to think where I am. On the other side of the river, on the north bank, we have an area called Kvillebeck. It doesn't take long time. It's just over the bridge, six minutes by bike, um, if you want to see it. Uh, where we have, together with six, seven builders of, uh, in Gothenburg, built a very sustainable area where we have tried to focus on the three perspectives. There's also a very good example in uh, Johanneberg Science Park, which is one of the science parks up at the Schalmers University. We also have a, a climate footprint project, which I think is going to be uh, a little bit known, more known in the future when it's uh, finished, because that's a very interesting project, which uh, the city and, of course, the academia and the industry has been working with uh, together. I think that's the strength of the city of Gothenburg, actually, to, to ma manage to collaborate and try to find consensus on some rules to follow when it comes even to the building process. But there are much more to do, especially when it comes to um, transport, when it comes to building, and chemicals. I think I end there. And I didn't show my pictures. Do you want to see them? Okay, I'll try. There's another picture. Quite nice. That's an old boat. I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Andalie.